Mark, if, the, if you can read the conflict of interest, please. Yes, Mayor. Under state law, a conflict of interest exists if a council member or certain members of that person's family has a qualifying financial interest in an agenda item. Members with a conflict of interest cannot participate in the discussion nor vote on the agenda item. Are there any known conflicts of interest to disclose at this time? None. 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 I have one on 13 and 14. And then for me. Okay, um, because we have so many um, in attendance for our recognitions of awards and proclamations, we're going to take things just a little bit of out of order, and we're going to start with you. So you're always welcome to to remain here uh, and 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 listen to the rest of the meeting. But we do want to make sure that we're respectful of your time, so we're going to get started with that first. Having said that, um, Christina. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mayor, Commission, as well as our audience and those who are being recognized today. We really appreciate you all joining us here at the City Commission meeting. Um, so one of the things that we are starting to do now, uh, this is the first time that we are doing this. Uh, we are going to be having a Mayor's Business of the Month. Um, and August 2023 is the first time that that will be uh, recognized. So w before we announce that, I know it's on the agenda, but we do want to show you a little video of this business that we put together. So in case you haven't been there, I think this will make you want to check it out. <coughs> We started off with mini donut recipes, and then over the years, we kind of all grew our development into cookies and brownies and cakes and pies, and the list can just go on and on and on and on. To be honest, we have a wide variety of, of clientele um, from the ages of like two to all the way to like our, our parents and grandparents, you know, and that's great. And that just shows that we're opening the doors to something that creates a lot of curiosity, you know, because once you hear diabetic baking, first thing you get is the impression that it's gonna be bland or it's gonna be boring, you know, not exciting. And we love seeing the kids, especially coming in, and even adults, when they see the variety of bright colors and the variety of options, they get excited. And that's why we're in this business. So now they don't get to feel like they're being left out out of like the common items and common pastries. I get excited about that. We're a very small business. And uh, again, not a lot of people know what we do and what we offer. So having an acknowledgement like this or having um, the mayor recognize what we do, you know, our craft, it says a lot. It says a lot. And I'm more than anything grateful and appreciative for for the, that honor, you know, and, and that consideration to top it off. So out of all the businesses, you know, we, we were chosen, that, that's, that means something, it's very special to us. We are open Monday through Saturdays. Mondays and Saturdays, we're open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And uh, Tuesdays to Fridays, we're open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you can find us at our new location here. Uh, it's 1418 East Tyler Avenue, Suite 12. We're right across the street from the Walgreens and Papa John's. If you have a dream, it could be with anything, put it, like, put yourself out there. Don't be scared. You will never find out how far you can grow unless you put yourself out there. So as you all heard, it was Keto Mini Donuts who will be this month's Mayor's Business of the Month. And so we'd like to have Sofia Rodriguez join us up front. And we'd also like to have, um, I know that the mayor wants to share a few words about um, this initiative as well. Yes, um, so, 
<laughs> okay, maybe we can leave it right there, yes. Um, so this is something that is near and dear to my heart, and I think everyone here in the Commission, small businesses, and we want to be able to give back to our community and highlight the small businesses that are in our community that have shown resilience, that have shown um, the ability to make it through the pandemic and come out on the other side, being innovative and being able to provide, uh, you know, serve a need in our community when it comes to trying to live a healthy lifestyle, providing opportunities for snacks and um, healthy meals, all in, in, in trying to promote health and wellness in our community and also employing people here in our community. So we commend you for that. We are going to be doing this monthly, so we will have an opportunity to highlight businesses throughout our community. Um, we wanted to start with you because I know you and I have had uh, some uh, a conversation when I ran into your store and we talked about all the great things that you're doing, but this is to kick it off and from here on out, we are going to involve the community and allow the community to uh, nominate businesses so that way we have a selection from the from community members and you can find that on the social media page for the city of Harlingen. Christina is going to be putting that out there so that way the community can get involved in this project and we're just excited to be able to celebrate you um, and also celebrate your five-year anniversary. So we appreciate you and this is just a way for us to acknowledge you and, and celebrate in, in, in this um, opportunity that you're providing for the community and also for yourself. Would you like to say a few words? Um, can everybody hear me? Yes, <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. I am very appreciative to be here, very humbled as well. And um, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to share with the city um, what we have to offer and having accepting this award i really want to accept it on behalf of my family who wasn't able to be here today but i know they're supporting me from home and from work and on behalf of all our customers that supported us throughout the years and especially harlingen for allowing us to uh call home you know so thank you so much and i will cherish this and i will share this with everyone in our store so thank you so much everyone thank you. Now, if I can have the commission join me as we provide the award. So as they take some photos, um, the mayor and commission also wanted to provide Sophia with a proclamation. So they'll be taking some photos right now while I read the proclamation. You can stay there. The proclamation reads as follows. Whereas Sophia Rodriguez, with the love and support of her family, established Keto Mini Donuts in 2018 located in Harlingen, Texas. And Sophia came up with a concept of what is now known as Keto Mini Donuts in 2010 when she was selling baked goods solely online so on social media. Whereas Keto Mini Donuts business mindset is to promote health and wellness in Harlingen. As part of their commitment, the owners and bakers use healthy ingredients, even within their delicious desserts, such as donuts and other baked goods. And Keto Mini Donuts does not just solely sell donuts. They also have a healthy menu to include low carb and keto friendly meals from tacos and pozole to egg salad and chicken salad on toast. And whereas Keto Mini Donuts is celebrating its fifth anniversary of officially opening in Harlingen and is currently located at 1418 East Tyler Avenue, and the city of Harlingen recognizes Keto Mini Donuts for its contribution to health, wellness, and the local economy, and applauds the business for being recognized on the Texas Bucket List, which airs on television stations throughout the great state of Texas. Whereas Sofia Rodriguez, born and raised in Harlingen, along with her husband, Miguel Gon oops, I did not pronounce that right, Miguel, Mother Isabel Rodriguez, daughter Lillian Rose, and son Ryan Corgan are proud and grateful to own and operate a thriving local business in the city that they get to call home. 
Now, therefore, Norma Sipul, the mayor of Harlingen, on behalf of the commission, does hereby proclaim Keto Mini Donuts as Mayor's Business of the Month for August 2023. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Sophia, for joining us. And you can find that video on Instagram if you'd like to share it and get a closer look at what the donuts look like. They only have one calorie each. One so. calorie each, each donut. You cannot beat that. So I encourage everyone to go give them a try. And they also have uh, meals um, every week, all healthy meals. And so she can, she can definitely get you on the right path um, to, to eating healthy, but also enjoying your meals. So. Thank you so much for that. And you can also find her on the bucket list. I think there's a video on YouTube. And if you Google Keto Donuts and Harlingen, you can see it there. So what an, a, a, a wonderful uh, day for Keto Donuts. Now, moving on, Christina. So now we would like to recognize um, four girls who were crowned recently. I think it was just two and a half weeks ago. It was a very exciting pageant that took place in McAllen. Uh, they didn't know that they were going to be crowned and we'd like to recognize them. So the mayor and commission would like to recognize Mally Macias. She is Miss Texas Preteen, if you could stand. They'd also like to recognize Gabriela Molina. She is Junior Miss USA, as well as Isabel Garcia, Miss Teen USA. And Aria Longoria, Little Miss Texas. We are very proud of them and we look forward to seeing all of them out in the community wearing their beautiful crowns. And I know that the mayor would like to share a few words as well about um, this award. Well, first and foremost, congratulations, ladies, on an incredible achievement. You all look beautiful today and we know that you're going to represent um, your titles with dignity and respect and I know that Aria has already offered to help in community events and so we're looking forward to incorporating her. I know she was at the State of the City and wanting to do other events so we're excited and we extend that partnership to all of you to, in, to participate in our community events as well. So as you know already that community service is important and that's why you are here and so we want to be able to provide that opportunity and hopefully we can do it together. So again, congratulations on, uh, on, on your incredible achievement. So we would like you all to join the yes. mayor and commission up front to receive your recognition from the city of Harlingen.
All right. So I know that the commission um, is really proud of one of the individuals who is a state champion. So we do have a state champion joining us here today. Um, and that is Victoria Garcia, if you could please stand. So Victoria competed in masonry. And if you don't know what that is, um, I can't provide you all of the details about how to do it, but I know that it is, you know, a trade that is mostly, you know, male dominated. She competed against 60 uh, boys and three girls, and she was a state champion number one in the entire state. So um, we have seen that, you know, that program grow here in Harlingen. I know that one of her mentors is here as well, Mr. Santayin, um, who... Santian, who um, is also, uh, you know, he's retired now, but he's a lifelong instructor. Um, and, you know, I've actually been to his class to see uh, the brick process. So um, it is very impressive that um, Victoria is, has accomplished this monumentous um, award. So for her outstanding accomplishment, placing eighth also at the, U, the Skills USA National Championship. So if you're if you win from your state, you go and compete against others throughout the country, and she brought home um, eighth place. So that is amazing. Um, so we want to wish her a big congratulations. Uh, she competed against 32 others who were number one in their state and qualified for the Masonry Championship. Um, she also participated in Spa Glass Summer Construction Camp held at Harlingen High School South. And we would like to congratulate her on the 16th day of August, 2023. We'd like to invite you up to receive the award. If the commission can join me. Right, so we also have a good group of students here today from Harlingen High School South, Go Hawks. Um, they <laughs> competed at the state championship in UIL One Act Play, and they were the state champions. So we also have a variety of state champions here with us today. If you are one of those, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> So they had an exceptional season and their outstanding accomplishment was that they were awarded the 2023 5A UIL One Act Play State Champions with their production of Indecent by Paula Vogel. And to kind of talk about the program, I'd like to invite um, one of their directors, Eddie Cavazos, up here to share a few words. Hi there, thank you for having us here today. First and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, the city of Harlingen for their unwavering support of the fine arts. It's because of you that these kids feel equipped to go out into the world and share their messages. Uh, this is actually the third consecutive year that Harlingen South has advanced to the state level of competition. This year in the 5A conference, we were new to that conference, uh, there was an unprecedented amount of schools, of over a few hundred schools within the state. We advanced through several rounds of competition, um, six rounds to be specific, and we were under 
undefeated the entire way through. At the state championship, we also received top honors. We received the top performer award and the Samuel French award for an individual by the name of Devin Claudio. Uh, Adriana Rodriguez received all-star cast and Bruce Gonzalez, a senior, received honorable mention all-star cast. So the kids put in a lot of time and effort into this production. It truly takes a village of actors, technicians, and brilliant like-minded individuals. So once again, thank you so much for your unwavering support. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Thank you. We are so incredibly proud of you. So can we get the state champs to come take a picture with us? <laughs>
Okay. Moving on, now that we have done our presentation of proclamations and recognition of awards, we're going to move back on up to citizen communication. Amanda, do we have anyone signed up? Uh, yes, ma'am. We have a total of seven. And the first one is Don Ray she Leonard. Give me the drainage. To speak on drainage. Okay, there. Okay, got it. Thank you. Good evening. Is this on? Okay. Don Ray Leonard, District 2. Recent county losses due to disaster flooding was estimated to be over $30 million, and that's just intangible losses. Loss of livestock, damage and loss of property, destruction of crops, loss of land and home values, displacement from one's home, loss of livelihoods, disruption to business and industry, disruption to clean water supplies, Disruption to wastewater treatment, electricity, <coughs> transportation, communications, and education. Illness due to waterborne disease. The overwhelming stress and the fear. For some people, the psychological <coughs> impacts can be devastating. These losses and disruptions can traumatize victims and their families for years. One young couple decided to forego their beautiful wedding at the urge of their parents and instead opted to put a nice down payment on a new home. One year later, they were applying for FEMA funds. A young single mother with two jobs and two children struggled for five years after her divorce, only to be waiting in knee-high water in her rental home. This woman and her children were displaced by the flood. They lost everything. She lost her job. She moved in with her sister and had to start over again. A disabled veteran was flooded out of one area, moved to what he thought was a safer area, only to be flooded out again. Confined to a wheelchair, he was at the mercy of his friends and his family. He lost his independence, and more importantly, he lost his will to fight. Just three Harlingen families out of thousands who have suffered des devastating losses, financial, physical, and emotional. This harm was due to recent flooding because Harlingen has neglected their priorities by not resolving these, future, these infrastructure issues for years. Mr. Martinez, and you've seen this plan, was again offered his TRZ drainage project plan for Highway 77 and Commerce Street interchange near the Loop 499. This is an urgent infrastructure project. Updating the wall system is primary. It operates by quickly moving the water out. The suggested holding pond is a secondary solution. I strongly recommend that the city manager and staff submit options to mitigate and organize funds, funding solutions to the TERS One Board and city commission for this vital drainage project. The citizens and businesses in this area are of low to moderate income and have suffered greatly. Many have never recovered, and yet here we are. Nothing in the pipe but a road to nowhere. There is no excuse to delay because next time could be at any time. Thank you. Interrupt? Thank you, Ms. Leonard. The next one is Israel Aguilar. Uh, and the topic is item number 14 on the agenda. All right, good evening, Mayor Sepulveda and Commissioner's Court. Israel Aguilar, 28136 Cook Lane, Harlingen, Texas. And I'm here to speak on item number 14 on the agenda. Uh, so let me give you a little history on this particular topic with school safety and pertain to the Harlingen Independent School District. So for approximately five years, I have personally, along with the assistance of other community members, advocated strongly uh, for the Harlingen CISD to develop its own police department. Um, especially within the last two years, I have strongly engaged with the community as well as presenting myself in front of uh, this court uh, to ask uh, for some additional explanation or some resources as to uh, why they still don't have their own police department. After a further research uh, that they do have the funds uh, and of course there is a need as we have learned that even until recently a uh, relative of the uh, Uvalde shooter was stopped uh, before he would commit another crime here in Texas, just this month. And so there certainly continues to be a present and clear danger 
when we don't have enough protection and resources for our children. <coughs> but even to this day, it's sad that there's still no, uh, there still is not a Harlingen CISD school police department. Instead, they have developed numerous MOUs and arrangements and partnerships with different organizations and entities of law enforcement across the county. Approximately one year ago when the city had its state of the city address, I came again before this court and asked Chief Kester who then said that the city police department simply was not enough to provide care for the school district and to the city simultaneously. That's on record, right? Well, I did follow up. I did exactly what you all asked of me at the time. And I did continuously meet with the school district and the school board. In fact, I even ran for the office of school board. It's still, it's very sad and concerning that Harlingen still believes that they have it under control. But yet today, I'm here to applaud your effort to require that they continue to develop their police department. Now, I don't know what the interlocal agreement is that you currently will discuss today, because I've never read it. I don't know where to find it. I've asked for it, but I think that's something that is, you know, uh, not publicly available at this time. But from what I know, according to the recent news article, was that it required historically for the district, if they're going to continuously relay, rely on you all for support, is to develop their police department. I just, I'm almost done. I just want to say that I would really appreciate it if you continue to encourage and require for HCISD if they will need your resources that they eventually develop their own police department. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Agenda. The next, the next one is Mr. Jim Young, and it's Tony Butler Golf Course. Hi. Hello. Uh, Jim Young, 1621 Paloma Circle East, Harlingen. Thanks for letting me speak. Uh, I'm here, uh, as Amanda said, not just on my own behalf, but on behalf of the Golf Advisory Board. Uh, we always start where we should, which is thanking the board and the city commission for their steadfast support of the golf course and the investments in the renovations that are actually going to get underway in about six weeks. The mission, of course, I think we all agree, is for Tony Butler to be a self-sustaining and profitable enterprise. Uh, years ago, the course was losing money and the city, probably rightly at the time, took over the finances. Um, since then, Jeff Hart has also taken over as course pro, and in his time there, uh, the financial health of the golf course has markedly improved year over year. Uh, Jeff and his team have done a terrific job in management of the course, but, and this is obvious, but uh, a for-profit enterprise and a city department are fundamentally different things. And this arrangement has the city relating to the golf course as a city department. Um, all the money we make goes right back into city coffers. Instead of allowing the golf course to reinvest that money into itself uh, and to be able to more easily maintain appropriate and consistent levels of operating capital. Part of the arrangement has also included loans from the city to the golf course, which again, I think at the time was necessary. But since then, we continue to pay significant interest back to the city on those loans. Now, these circumstances have put limitations on Jeff's ability to run the golf course, to maintain pro shop and concession stand inventories, to effectively manage labor, and to keep up with the improvements and maintenance of the golf course and our aging golf cart fleet. So we think it's time to begin to transition away from this arrangement, which I'm confident was only meant to be temporary in the first place. Um, restore Tony Butler to a true enterprise fund entity and give Jeff the tools he needs to help us take full advantage of the investments that are being made. We recognize this is a slightly more complex issue than a couple minutes allow, but we'd like to initiate that discussion. So thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Young. Um, the next one is Mr. Raymond Reyes, and it's on progress. Uh, Raymond Reyes, as always, uh, here hopefully uh, seeing positive things changing. Uh, it's good that we're uh, supporting uh, small businesses. I think that's needed a, a lot. I've 
unfortunately I've been very, very busy doing, dealing with other things and um, I just barely got a chance to look at the agenda. Um, one thing that, that came to thought uh, in regards to the schools, I guess that's going to be discussed later on today with this arrangement, whatever the case may be. I live by some schools right there on Nantucket. So um, I constantly, constantly see the police presence and everything. But one thing that always comes to mind, and I've seen it actually in real time in other countries, and the country that always comes to mind is Israel. So Israel, little tiny country surrounded by all these terrorist countries, you know, that don't like Israel. I wonder why. Uh, they don't have those issues at their schools. One thing that I did notice while I was out there, not on top, on top of the guards that they have, they have dogs. Uh, dogs are a lot different than human beings, of course. They don't fear uh, bullets. They can run a lot faster. They can be trained to do certain things. When a person sees a dog that's out to do harm, even to a business, because I've had dogs at my business, and I have well-trained dogs at my residence. It's a deterrent, because you can deal with a human, but that dog is going to make you think twice. I've seen the studies uh, in Israel. Again, they have dogs. They don't have those issues at their schools. The thing that I have seen is that it always goes back to the cost. Well, you got to maintain an officer, and then you got to maintain the dog and stuff. But factor in what is the cost of human life, especially a child. It's, there's no comparison in my eyes and stuff. Um, I see all these resources being utilized, but still these tragedies are happening all the time. Now, again, that's just my, my opinion. So um, going back to small businesses, I think we should uh, continue going in the direction that we're doing. I think uh, there's a lot more things that can be done, especially on west side of Jackson. Um, I'm on the board. I always think that there should be more things going on um, and we should be included more on stuff that's being developed in and around that area, but as anything else, it takes time. And uh, time I have. I mean, obviously I've been here. I haven't gone back to San Antonio, though I do go back and forth. I'm trying to do a big push on other things that I'd like to see happen on the west side of Jackson and, and hopefully we can get the support from the community and the commission to continue growth and uh, continue the positive direction that, that we're going in. So uh, with that ring of the bell, my time is up and uh, you guys uh, continue doing what you do and have a good evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Ron Lozano. <coughs> Honor District 3. When uh, Jim Young says true enterprise fund, one of you should be really careful with that phrase. Two planks on her stump speech. Get good restaurants or her eldest son wouldn't stay, would stay, and transparency. At your last meeting, her allies had disparate views. So she says, I'll review the emails and then we can handle the issue internally. How is that transparent? It just leaves Harlingenites out. And believe me, just like other Americans, pets are very valuable to Harlingenites. She's an imperial, imperial queen, and though you recognize it, you seem to adopt that perspective. The mayor said that we can lower taxes when the time is right, and is arguing the state will help lower taxes by raising the homestead exemption. Despite the fact the homestead exemption, like Mr. Aguilar knows, does not apply to city taxes. It only applies to school district taxes. She likes to pull the wool over her eyes. When er while every cent reduction leads to an approximately 400,000 reduction in the city budget, the mayor claims that it will only lead to modest decreases for the average homeowner, as if a modest reduction is not worth fighting for. The mayor touts that she supports small businesses. But this tax raise, which is what a voter approval rate is a tax hike, and hurts small businesses the most. While small businesses and homeowners wait for tax reductions that are perpetually over the horizon, the city commission is poised to again raise everyone's taxes 
while patting themselves on the back as the actual tax rate is reduced by six cents. This hides the fact that appraisals are at historic highs and the tax rate cut needed to just get down to no new revenue. In other words, keeping actual tax amounts from increasing is a 10 cent reduction, not six. When Senate Bill 2 a few years back, the state prohibits the city from raising total tax revenue more than 3.5% from the prior year. This is called the voter approval rate. Anything greater than 5.4 of the 54 cent rate that the commission is proposing would automatically trigger and require a voter oversight. The Commission seeks to avoid this oversight and proclaim they are providing tax relief by skirting against the voter approval rate. But now, but now voters are getting smarter and you all are about to find out that whiplash. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lozano. Um, Robert Leftwich on skyrocketing taxes. Robert Leftwich, not on Andy's Parkwood. Uh, uh, Mr. Saucy, I just wanted to ask, uh, does the Roberts Rule of Order? Uh, it's public comment, Mr. Lefkowitz. It's, uh, I'm just, just May, wanna, uh, I just want to point out that if you're going to delay my comments, I want to add time added. The fact of the matter <coughs> is, Mayor, you just put citizens communication after the mayor's business and you said it under the guise, well, this is a, a one time or a special deal. You just said it's going to be a monthly occurrence. Are we going to have to endure these crowds if we want to come under public comments? I don't think that Robert's Rules of Orders, which you're basing that on, being able to change the agenda item, supersedes or is over state law, which says that citizens communication has to be first on the item. If you want these young people that are coming to hear what the citizens of the community are saying to y'all, that's when you need to have people come and talk so that they can hear. That's why you're bringing them to a meeting. If you're bringing them here because you want to rose color the, the city, that's not gonna cut it. The fact of the matter is I'm not here for that, but I, I wanna make that observation because every time we have a budget or a tax meeting, you conveniently have a, an, a, a, an executive session. You make everybody wait when there's a big crowd that, don't, that are here to oppose the tax increase. You make everybody wait for an hour but when it's your deal, your deal, you're putting yourself over the citizens and you put yourself in place. So let's talk about the TERS because we're going to talk about some budget items. The fact of the matter is that is a road to nowhere. And that the fact is the, bound, the, the boundaries that you guys are extending in the TERS, they're all in the county. The TERS is a reinvestment zone. Commissioner Lopez, I know you argued Robert, this. Robert, rules of order require that you direct to the chair and not to the commission individually unless they appoint or they ask you a question. Okay, the right fact now. of the matter is I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, can, I can say this. I'm going to tell you all right now. There is a conflict of interest on the TERS vote. And I'm going to read this because this is a city ordinance. It's the city ordinance. I know you read the state law, but it says, whereas in the interest of good government, that the conduct of the public business should be accomplished by city officials and city employees, that have no personal financial interest in such public business. The fact is, is that I have the right, and I'm gonna tell you, if I need to address you, Mayor, I will. There's a conflict of interest, and the city attorney needs to address it, or there's gonna be a complaint filed at the PD. Somebody here participated in a, in a discussion and a vote that has to do with that TERS when they're an employee of the county and the county is benefiting because they are a business entity. And the state law says that if you make 10% of your income from that other business entity and you discuss or take part in, you are violating state law. Thank you, Mr. Leckwich. Okay, the last one is Mr. Desi Martinez. <coughs> well, Desi Martinez, I want to start this thing. I saw the gentleman using that. I'd like to just go on the record on the recommendations by the city manager uh, stating that the Harlingen Comprehensive Plan, that the TERS $2 million that he's requesting, which will deplete the TERS 1 uh, fund till uh, 2027, because it's uh, only about 200000 a year will completely defund, defund any activity on terse activity on the existing boundaries. I want to clarify that. Secondly, I want to uh, respond to the 
to his uh, uh, that was on to his report or his recommendations that the terrorist is a is a only outlet or uh, avenue for economic growth for that uh, area. Well, according to the comprehensive plan, I give you the information there in front of you. It says that Harlingen and Cameron County and the San Benito Metropolitan, Harlingen San Benito Metropolitan NPO and the Texas Department of Transportation, and I give you some examples of what they funded, which requires a minimum part of participation locally. I don't understand since the, since the 2006 that was developed by, by him and the former city manager and the committee, that's what we do, uh, comprehensive planning, why they didn't apply that to the TxDOT funding? You can see that green uh, project up there, about $10 million, that's going to connect 509 to the new, uh, I call it the new Cancun Bridge of North South Padre Island that we pay taxes for as well. And why didn't we do it then if this is such an important area? It is important. Who, you know, you're talking to, the, to an economist. It's important to the airport. It's important to, to, uh, to the port. But it's a, it's a county project. On all you're doing is extending a 150 or 200 foot right away to build a county road. County roads are funded by TxDOT. And you go through the planning process, mayor, you go on that committee, the RGV NPO now, so it's the county judge. But why are we taking all the funds from District 1, Terrace 1? Are we going to do the same for District 5? We're going to do the same for the other district uh, uh, and 2, I think it's 2, uh, or 3. We've got to do this right. We're doing the same thing of catering to politics, and we shouldn't. This money, half of it belongs to the taxpayers of Harlingen. And the final question is, is the tourist money allowed under city charter, the, the revenue part, the 57 percent, can it be used outside of the county limits? That's a legal question that I hope you answer and the auditor reviews. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Anyone else, Amanda? Uh, no, ma'am. Thank you. Moving on to... Well, Commissioner, uh, Mary, I wanted to say one thing. Sure. If every member of the public feels that there has been any crime or anything, I think it's their moral obligation to report it and make sure that they do talk to the PD or Texas Rangers or whoever, uh, because you never want any uh, unethical action. So if someone in the public does believe that, I welcome it. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lopez. You're out of order, Mr. Lefwich. You're out of order. Item two, approval of minutes. Item two A, the regular meeting of July 19, 2023. Do we have any changes to the minutes? Or if not, can we have a motion to approve? There's a, I have a correction on page six that I will give to the city secretary where okay. we repeated sentence okay. we just need to delete that highlighted okay, sir. Thank you. there was a repetition of the sentence okay with that correction I recommend approval of the minutes is there a second second, second. all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. <coughs> aye. opposed aye. motion carries we have item three, the consent agenda. Items A through C, is anyone needing to remove anything from the consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. If I may, uh, I would like to uh, remove uh, 3A from the consent agenda for further discussion. Okay, noted. And 3C, please. And 3C, wonderful. Are we okay with a motion to entertain the consent agenda item B be approved? Actually, <clears throat> do you want that removed? Oh, not removed. I wanted to, add. yes, C, I want it removed, yeah. Okay, C has already been removed. Yeah. Uh, do we have a motion to approve item 3B? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Item 3B passes, and now we're moving on to <coughs> Item 3A, Consideration and Possible Action to Approve an Ordinance on Second and Final Reading, Amending the City of Harlingen Ordinance 06-31, Expanding the Boundaries and Approving the Amended Project Plan and Finance Plan for the Harlingen Tours Number 1. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll open up that for discussion. Commissioner Morales? Yes. Um, obviously, there's some uh, opposition to this. And uh, at last meeting, I opposed it. And what we have to keep in mind at the last meeting, which was what, last week, two weeks ago, there was only, uh, <clears throat> it was, a, it was it just barely made quorum. So I would like to uh, make sure that the other commissioners, Commissioner uh, Kinsley and Commissioner uh, Pettis, also participate in the vote, whether they want to proceed with this or they want to table this for further uh, evaluation. I, I don't, I strongly believe that this should be, th these funds should be used in another area other than providing this to this uh, county road. Uh, by the numbers that I looked at, we're looking at 70% is the city's cost and 30% is the county's. And that is from the material that we received on our packets. Unless there's something else, prior to this, uh, a week ago, it was, uh, yeah, it was the same thing. It was 80 20. Uh, and Gabe said it was 60 40. I don't see 60 40. I see 30, uh, 70 30 to where the city is going to pay for this. That's a lot of funds that's going to go out there to that project. And we first discussed this a while back. We have plenty of residents from that area that are posted. Apparently, they didn't get the word that this was going on. Otherwise, I'm sure we would have some residents opposing this other than the people that just spoke up against it. Mayor, may I respond? Yes, please. Uh, Morales, you said almost a quorum or barely a quorum. It's like being pregnant. You are, you aren't. We had a quorum. No, almost go into the calculation. The other thing is you were at the TERS meeting. And before the TERS meeting, you went to Amanda and you got the, the, uh, the agenda. You printed it yourself and you brought it up to a person you were sitting two seats from because he couldn't wait for the agenda. And then you were at that meeting and it's not a road to nowhere. What you guys don't understand is just before COVID, we had a major aerospace manufacturing company coming to Harlingen on the east side of the airport. And they do stuff in big ways for Boeing. And then COVID hit, international and national travel plummeted. People weren't flying. Boeing shut down making airplanes. And this company said, we're not coming to Harlingen. So this isn't a pipe dream, this is a reality. And then you also heard at that TERS meeting that we cannot have TxDOT take that road because TxDOT's not accepting roads. And we have to do it along with the county to do it. And so this is a valid use of that property and if you don't dream, you will die. And the city has to plan for the future, for the industrial complex south of Grimes Road, and for the airport, for companies that want to come in, aerospace companies and other companies that want to come in. They need access. They need access to the Port of Harlingen for things. They need access four-lane highway to, for big trucks and things to move, to get on Ed Carey, to go up to the interstate to deliver things. And this is not a pipe dream, this is reality. And if you don't plan for the future, you're damned not to have a future. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to point out to the commission that this, uh, this particular line item or action item does not allocate money to the, uh, the Grimes Road project. It simply lists us as being eligible for funding in TERS number one. So this item doesn't transfer any money to any project. It just simply adds a, a list uh, that says Grimes Road to the TERS project list. Right now, there's about seven or eight projects on that. This is just another one that'll be added. There's no money being transferred 
two tours right now. That'll come later, and at that point, you can you can actually vote to either grant the money for the TERS project or deny it. But this is just simply listing it as a project in the TERS uh, project list. Correct, and if I understand correctly, this makes, this is a vote that it is an eligible project, uh, then it would come back to the commission, commission would vote at that time, and it would need to go to the county, and, and their commission would also have to vote on that. Is that correct? Well, uh, if this, if this vote is appropriate for the project, then we have to go to the county, and then they have to agree to amend the boundaries, the project plan, and the finance plan. Once that, if, and if they do that, then uh, we have to come back to the commission with an agreement with the city and the county to pay for it. That's when the, fund, the project gets funded. So. And then the way this got here was the TERS meeting met, the TERS group met, and it was voted with one negative vote, who you parrot, his words exactly, and other than that, it passed, everyone else passed this. So it already went through the TERS committee. Is there any other uh, discussion? You're, you're out of order. This is only for the commission. Thank you. That's okay. Yes, um, so we're going to decline decline that request. Thank you, Mr. Lefwich. Is there any other uh, discussion from the commission? Okay. So if there's no other discussion, I'll entertain a motion. So moved to accept a 3A. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Pettis. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. Moving on to item C, consideration and possible action to approve the installation of speed humps on the following streets. Um, this was placed on the agenda by uh, Commissioner Pettis and Morales. And I believe we'll start with you, Commissioner Pettis. Um, I just wanted to add another street to that that I just got recently. And that was, I would request on Seagull Lane, for speed humps on, on Seagull Lane, from Spoonville to Curly Lane. Okay, so when you say seagull, you mean the bird, the seagull? Yes, yeah, it's, okay. it's okay. a street in my district. Okay. Yeah. So speed humps on Seagull Lane from Spoonbill to Curlew Lake. <coughs> now I wanted to add uh, two on 12th Street. Okay. So two on 12th Street for Commissioner um, Lopez. Uh, usually Craig's not here for me to yell at him, so and, I'm not sure. we're adding. <laughs> 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 Who to send it to? <laughs> okay. Thank you. And my last one. Uh, I have uh, already sent them to Lewis. Seventh Street between, uh, I'm sorry, Davis between Third and Seventh Street, and uh, Austin between Thirteenth and Morgan. I think we have to amend the budget include more money for street humps. <laughs> <laughs> so, Unless so, you want to withdraw those requests for, for, oh, okay. for speed humps. So, so if I got these down, then there's now eight. Is my math correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. So did you get that, Josh? Okay, wonderful. With those um, requests from the commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to new business, we have item four, public hearing and possible action to adopt an ordinance on first reading amending the city of Harlingen code of ordinances, chapter 111, article 10, section 111-275 by adding definitions, section 111-280, special sign categories, permitted, permitted and prohibited signs by allowing wind flag signs and feather flag signs with limitations and providing for publication and ordaining <coughs> other matters related to the foregoing I, uh, commission, uh, I gave a presentation about two months ago about this uh, uh, proposal to uh, approve feather flag signs and wind flag signs. Uh, it was the, the commission was receptive, but I was asked to go before the small business board, uh, which I did about a month ago, and the small business board was very receptive to the ordinance, but they asked uh, for limitations on the feather flag signs to not just allow, in the, allow them indefinitely. They set up a committee of the small business board, so I met with the committee. Uh, so the committee came up with the, uh, what you have in your ordinance today, 
which is to allow federal flag signs uh, as a temporary permit for 30 days uh, up to four times a year. So that's the main change from the previous. And will, how will businesses be notified of this? Uh, I can work with the communications department to get like a public service announcement to get the word out that we, we will now allow feather flag signs uh, with limitations, right? And they have to come in and get a permit. There's a, the waiver of liability form that they have to sign. So we can explain that in the public service announcement. Uh, so one, if the ordinance is adopted, uh, we will work out the logistics and then uh, we will start seeing feather flag signs uh, but with limitations, we will not see them. And, and the first go around, then you'll be kind and gentle and let people know it's a new <laughs> ordinance. Yes, yeah, a brand new ordinance yeah. that will allow them, but uh, not in other communities, they're just allowed, they're not regulated. Uh, here we're gonna allow them, but with limitations. So I'll just say right now, um, Commissioner, we don't allow it at all. So there, <coughs> this is a way for them to start um, being Correct. able to request a permit to have them out. So we shouldn't really have anybody that's in violation since it's going to be a new um, opportunity for them to be able to promote their business. Um, the I did have a question I w when I was reviewing this <coughs> the other day. It's um, on page 39. It says, wind flags <coughs> on item G signs shall be allowed in private property without having to obtain sign permits as long as connected to a permanent pole structure, commercial or institutional properties with a building shall have a total allowance of two square feet for wind flag signs per total linear foot. Wind flag, it says on a permanent, is this like a big a big um, yeah. sign? Not a wind flag. They're, a norm, they're normally on metal poles, uh -huh. but sometimes they're attached to buildings, right? But they're normally on flag poles, right? Okay, yeah. so these are the permanent structures and you are going to, are they, there's no limit? Yeah, so we will allow them, but uh, with limitations because uh, the small business board, they ask for limitations. Okay. So basically the, the limitation will be two square feet for, uh, every, for each linear foot of building uh, visible from a public street. Okay. So that, that gives a lot of <coughs> leeway for businesses to Okay. to set up a wind flag signs. Okay, because I remember there was that, was that discussion during the one, that one meeting, so I Correct. wanted to make sure that that was taken care of. Okay, um, are there any other questions from the commission? No? Okay, with no questions. Oh, sorry, one last one. Mm -hmm. One of the photos you use is a car dealership in my district off of a loop. Um, I just wanted to ask, there was language in the new ordinance about size of uh, those wind flags talks about um, it's your new definition G 6G it talks about commercial or institutional properties with the building uh, shall have a total allowance of two uh, square feet of wind flag signs per total linear foot <coughs> of building visible from a public street uh, yes. it wouldn't affect that that business no no that business should be fine so essentially, like we're talking about, when you're going to in far, they have that Audi dealership that has a massive flag, right? Mm -hmm. You can see it from miles away. You're saying that based on the the amount of room that dealership takes on the frontage, that would then dictate how big that flag could be. Yeah, and basically the 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 two square foot that you have in your ordinance, uh, in your packet, is based on the huge burdock then uh, wheat flag sign that that got installed in front of Toyota. So we did the calculation so that that wind flag sign can, can stay, right? Uh, so yeah, most businesses will be allowed a lot of uh, wind flag signs if desired, just not like, super excessive, right? Yeah, but that one business should be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was my last question. Thank you very much, Olivia. Okay. And uh, thank you to the small business committee for looking into this. Yeah, they were a nice group. <coughs> At this time, um, since there's no other discussion, we'll open it up to a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak for or against the adoption of this ordinance? Hello, my name is, oh, thank, thank you, Mayor, thank you, Commissioners. My name is David Cavazos. I'm a small uh, business owner 
we just basically opened like seven days ago. It's called pre -game. Thank you. Thank you. It's called pre-game nutrition. We're promoting a healthier lifestyle, uh, protein drinks, energy drinks, and uh, so yes, I was. Those legs would really help us small business owners. Uh, you know, I did the permit for our my sign. You know, up in the the building, but still, you know, we're not being seen, and so um, that would help us succeed and and. Uh, in our businesses, and I believe uh, it helped other businesses succeed as well as, as Harlingen. So I appreciate you, your time, and thank you all. I'm curious where are you located. Where, yeah. Sir? <laughs> I'm where sorry, uh, 1548 North 77 Sunshine Street. Yeah, this is okay. free advertisement. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that First is time near here, so <laughs> never been in You're near like where? This. I'm sorry, ma'am? You're on uh, North 77 Se Sunshine Street, but a pro more What's or less. Um, there's a cricket laundromat in that plaza uh, before uh, Valley Radio. Okay. Uh, Trek. Trek just opened up. They, they, that's how I found out about this because Trek. By the bicycle place. Yeah. Yes. Dick yes. Office, run Dick Office Supply? Uh, by the no. Trek the bike down. store. Oh. By the old skating arena. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. About a block before that. And that's how I found out about the flags because I know they got a, a big fine. And, and, and I was thinking about doing that, not knowing that it was you know, prohibited. And so that's why I was, I'm here to speak about it. So, but thank you all. And yeah. tell us when, what are your hours? Oh, my hours are 6.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Saturdays is um, 7 to 5 and we're closed on Sundays. Wonderful. Much, Much success. To yeah. You. Thank you all. God bless you. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against the adoption of this ordinance? <coughs> Hi, my name is Delia Cabasos Gomez, District 1. I'd um, like to know, like Commissioner Mesmar just said, this is relaxing a little bit on the first, um, when we first get this out, if it passes. Who is to actually enforce that ordinance? Um, I'd like to know. I know you said it's up to three times a year or however so many times, but I'd like to know who's going to enforce that after. <coughs> the, way, the way it will work is they will come in to, to the building inspections department to get a signed permit. Uh, so it will be for 30 days. And uh, so we will, court enforcement will be looking out. Uh, so we're going to have to have like a calendar invite to ourselves to pay them a visit after the 30 days to remove the feather flag sign. Uh, but they can, they're allowed four for a year. Yeah. Is there anyone else wishing to speak for or against the adoption of this ordinance? Well, as I, Ron Wilson, a district three, as a young lady that just preceded me indicated uh, last week, it's all perspective. You heard uh, Javier say that limitations. What do limitations mean? There's absolutely no explanation of what limitations are, except there's going to be PSAs in the future. So again, when other Javier's come up without a budget, y'all don't care about money because it's only taxpayers' money. And as Mr. Mesmar just indicated, free advertising, it goes beyond that. You heard encouragement to patronize a certain particular private enterprise even if there's competitors. Our society is built on competition. You all shouldn't be favoring one business over another by telling the public to go and patronize a certain business. But those kind of ethic lapses that Dan was referring to, he, don't, he can't see them when they're so close to him. So again, I have no idea what the limitations are other than what he just said. There's only four allowed per year on an annual basis for 30 days. As the, the skimpy notes indicate, I was here when in 2010 they prohibited these signs. This is, this is America. Every, every, every week I have to come up here and remind you all what country you're in. You all are trying to be so totalitarian <coughs> in your approach, and yet can any one of you all tell me what limitations this signs refer to? What, what are these limitations? Does anybody know? No, we are, we're all like dunces. It's all gonna be perspective. This, this is no, no way to run a business or the city government. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else wishing to speak for or against? And I'll remind um, the folks in the in 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 the audience it's to speak for or against the adoption of the ordinance. <coughs> Hi, Beverly Loftus, Harlan Jenny, DC. Um, we just wanted to uh, speak in favor for the adoption. Um, we did meet with the business committee and other businesses in the community who really feel that this is needed. Um, even with the limitations that are being pro uh, pro um, recommended or proposed, um, this would go a long way to help them um, market their business in front of the store where maybe they're not seen because of other businesses um, or just imp imp impediments that may keep them from having their business be seen. So uh, we are in approval for this. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against the adoption of this ordinance? Having no one else here to speak, we will close the public hearing. Um, I will just add before we have the city attorney read the caption that we, the Small Business Advisory Committee is made up of small businesses from our community. Um, and they actually were the ones that brought uh, to our attention, um, which I was really surprised. Uh, I thought, you know, small businesses were gonna say, yes, give them, you know, 10 flags, 20 flags, but they said they wanted to make sure that our city remains beautiful and to ensure that there weren't too many flags and that there were some limitations. As business owners themselves, they wanted to make sure that the city of Harlingen remains um, <coughs> beautiful and gave us sam examples of other communities and other cities with lots of, um, of those feather flags and, and they were not in favor of that. And so I think it's important to listen to the small business community because they're the ones that, that know mostly how to what's going to impact their business and what's going to help promote their promote their business. Um, so having said that, I'll ask the city attorney to read the caption. An ordinance amending the city of Harlingen Code of Ordinances, Chapter 111, Section uh, 10, Article 10, Section uh, 111, 275, by adding definition Section 111, 280, special sign categories, permitted and prohibited signs by allowing wind flags and feather flag signs with limitations in providing for publication or ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. A motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item five, public hearing to consider possible action to adopt an ordinance on first reading for a rezoning request from residential multifamily district to plan development district for an open air food court townhomes with a 10 foot front yard setback and parking lot uses for 4.5206 acres out of block five of the south h bell subdivision in lots one through three seven through nine eleven thirteen fourteen sixteen nineteen twenty and twenty four through twenty eight of the mclary subdivision located at the northwest corner of m street and Fillmore avenue Mayor City Commissioners, this is a proposed uh, development as a mixed uses at the northwest corner of Fillmore and M Street. Right now the zoning is a M2 multifamily residential. This is the aerial photograph <coughs> of the project. Uh, a few months ago you ap approved the rezoning of the lots to the north. Um, so that's the second phase of the, of this, the same uh, developer. But in this one, he's proposing a mixed uses, and so that's why he applied for a plan development district. And so this is the site plan for the second phase of his project, which is uh, townhouses, 42 <coughs> townhouses located on the southwest side, and an, an open air food, food, food um, market located here with a proposed playground in the middle, and then parking lots here for the uh, open air food, uh, food market here. And then ad additional townhouses. Uh, townhouses, they're, uh, they're like individual homes, but there's no side setback. The houses <coughs> are against each other. So there's like a firewall that uh, keeps, the, uh, in case of a fire, from going from one, ha from one town townhouse to the other. Uh, they're very popular in, in, in other parts of the country. Uh, so these individual homes with no side setbacks. Their houses are against each other photos of the property in compliance with the comprehensive plan. So this is an, a rendering of a similar project uh, in, in another city. Uh, also is showing, uh, is, he's proposing a reduced front setbacks of 10 feet. 
So this is a project uh, that is kind of similar to what his, the developer is proposing. So it's individual home ownership, ideal for a new family trying to get started as a homeowner or a, a, a somebody retiring and they want to downsize, uh, this, this works very well for them. And these are the two subdivisions uh, next to each other. The two subdivisions uh, with the aerial. And this is the proposed uh, floor plan for the townhouses and the proposed uh, rendering for the individual townhouses. So this went before the Planning and Zoning Commission and they approved, no one spoke in opposition and it was approved unanimously during their August 9th meeting. Javier, this sounds like a great project. I, I only have um, one question. Is there gonna be, I couldn't tell from um, our packets, uh, sidewalks for people to walk to yes. and from? Yes, the uh, there are existing sidewalks already. Um, that was a recent, uh, I think it was a city project. So there's sidewalks on, on the west side of uh, M Street already in place. And so tell there will me be about flood control. So they, they're proposing a 50-year uh, drainage, so they're in full compliance with our drainage requirements. Uh, so you have a, a memo from your city engineer uh, saying uh, uh, approval. So they're proposing some detention areas and then for the water to, to connect to the drainage system to the, to the south side. Uh, yeah. That's in your district, Morales. Correct. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. I'm yes. all for it. Okay. Are there any questions from the commission? No. Okay. And I, I don't have any renderings for the open air food market, but it's going to be it's going to be nice. <coughs> it's going to be very different and, and very nice. And yeah. I know what. From what I read, it's going to be permanent structures, not food courts. Correct. Really nice, up you know, yes. modern uh, area for mm -hmm. that for that area with built-in kitchens, is that correct? Yes, uh, uh, yes. And then for, for renting for renting the spaces, yeah. I, I saw that. What's the time frame? That's a question for the developer, uh, he's here. So what we'll do is we'll open it up for um, a public hearing and yes. if anyone wishes to speak for or against the adoption um, of this ordinance and we'll start with uh, Mr. Garanza. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Julio Carranza, not a resident, but <clears throat> I'm here to develop. We've been uh, developing here uh, <coughs> multifamily and it's going great. Um, this is one of probably three more developments that we have uh, coming up. And uh, this is going to be really nice. It's gonna be gated. I don't think we mentioned that. And in the center on the detention area, we're gonna put some artificial grass um, and it's gonna be really, really nice there's going to be a sidewalk connection to the outdoor food and retail park. We want to work with the uh, university and start some type of incubator program so we can help small businesses as well. Um, and what was the other question? Time frame. Well, Javier, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, as soon as, uh, I mean, we're ready to go, pretty much. I, I guess the architect, so first we're gonna start with the townhome because there's gonna be more demand once there's townhomes there. Uh, you know, we wanna build up the momentum, right? It, it's, it's, a, it's phased out, but we wanna go as fast as possible, obviously. Um, we're pretty much 50% done with the plans. Once we get approval here, it goes to final plat approval for the planning and zoning. And as soon as the city approves it, we, we will break ground. I'm thinking October, maybe, November. I grew, awesome. I grew up in that area. I grew up in Los Vecinos right off that area. So that, that area has been empty for a long time. So thank you for developing it. Yeah, I'm, we're excited about <coughs> it. Um, it. We really want to do one of, you know, one of a kind thing here in Harlingen. Uh, we were going to put the, the most amount of resources possible. And we do want to work in conjunction with uh, the chambers, uh, the cultural arts. I want input from the community uh, so that everybody has just a little bit of a uh, say so have everybody the community as a stakeholder pretty much so once you're done with this one i go to district five on the other side of the <laughs> you know we're, we're very interested in, in continuing to come over here uh yes we and you know javier has been i, I don't want to you know <laughs> say because he's here but he's been <coughs> instrumental instrumental answering after hours i was out of the country 
he answers zoom calls whatever you got a you got a soldier working for you guys uh, but any other questions about the development we're excited for you and you know I echo the commissioner's um, <coughs> statements here that you know that that area has been vacant for a long time and to see it you know breathe life into it and provide opportunities for that the, the folks that are living in that area and really you're right I mean that's the <coughs> perfect spot people it drive is. through there every single day I, I drive through there back and forth um, multiple times per, per day so I think you're gonna have great visibility we're excited I think that it's a wonderful opportunity for an incubator type uh, set up uh, for food court area for folks that want to get into that business so we're excited that you're going to be a community <coughs> partner here in Harlingen. Thank you. Uh, just little things we want to make sure that um, in that area we're going to have some you know fiber optics so people can work there. Um, very top end Wi-Fi lighting uh, some type of warming capabilities when it's cold some type of uh, cooling capabilities when it's hot I, we're not at that point yet, but that's what we're going to do. Surround sound, the whole nine yards, you know, real nice. Hold events there and, and things of that nature. But we do need your support 100%. Well, you'll have a signature groundbreaking that's going to happen really quick. Yep. Thank you. So thank you. I mean, I hope it does. These guys still have to prove it. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else wishing to speak for or against? Harlan Jenny DC. Uh, we just wanted to um, give support for Mr. Carranza. He's done a lot in our community, um, and he, uh, he constantly is reaching out to different partners in the community to, to look for ways to uh, make Harlan better. And we definitely need this type of housing. I think it gives uh, younger folks an opportunity to find um, homes that maybe fit their style a little bit more. And so anything we can do to attract the different lifestyles and, and uh, ages would be great. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against? Having no one else to speak, we will close the public hearing at this time and I'll ask the city attorney to read the <coughs> caption. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances, ordinance number 16 8 of the city of Harlingen to rezone from residential multifamily M2 district to planned development PD district for an open air food court, townhomes with 10 foot front yard setback, and parking lot uses for 4.5203 acres of block 5 of the S.H. Bell subdivision and lots 1 to 3, 7 to 9, 11, 13, 14, 16, 19 to 20, and 24 to 28 of the McClary subdivision located on northwest corner of M Street and Fulmore Avenue providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Gonza. Item six, discussion and approve, to approve a request to amend the thoroughfare plan, a component of the comprehensive <coughs> plan by removing the proposed extension of Hancock Drive as a major collector road south of Primero Road to Wilson Road. And, okay. Yes, I mean, as you know, um, the EDC got a grant recently for infrastructure improvements for their uh, Roosevelt uh, subdivision. So that's the subdivision that is getting the, the grant mm -hmm. for to help us with the water and the sewer and the drainage and the streets. During the, the review of the subdivision, it came, it came to light that there's a, road, there's a roadway in the Torfer plan that, that is a, a, a proposed extension of Hancock Drive, and it runs right through the middle of the subdivision. It really negatively affects the project. Uh, city engineer and myself and the EDC officials uh, met and we all agree that that's a roadway that's, that really needed. It's a quarter mile from, from Expressway 77. Uh, so it's something that got drawn when <coughs> the comprehensive plan was drafted in 2015, but staff feels that it's not uh, necessary. So we're proposing to remove it from the Torfer plan so that it will not affect the EDC uh, subdivision project. And I did see that we had a letter in there from the EDC yes. with that request. Um, is there any discussion with the commission? Okay, at this time we will open up the public hearing. So, so right now it's just discussion. Uh, so oh, if you agree, sorry. if you I agree. Sorry, I just got in a roll with the public hearing. <laughs> sorry, yeah, no, this one and the next one is just discussion. Okay. So if you are in agreement, I will start the process to remove that roadway from the Torfer plan. So there's public, I need to advertise public hearings and notify the property owners. Uh, I don't foresee any problems uh, during the public hearings. 
So and this I, is needed, right, to take advantage of the grant that we Yes. Well, yes, yeah, it's, yes, it is. It's, all, it's only yeah. that proposed roadway is only a quarter mile from Expressway 77. It's not really needed mm -hmm. as, a, as a north south corridor. So what you're trying to do is interject common sense. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like that. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Like so then I think that there's a consensus on the commission is that right that this is Yes. Going to move yes. Forward? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you for that. Um, moving on to item 7, discussion to approve a request amending the code of ordinances to allow solar farms with the granting of an SUP in certain zoning districts. So this one is also just for discussion purposes. And so we have this company that is uh, interested in developing a solar farms in properties uh, east of the east of the airport or southeast of the airport. So uh, these are the properties where they want to develop these uh, solar farms. They're not allowed at all right now in our zoning ordinance. So right now they're a solar farm is not allowed. And, and this is like adjacent to the new battery facility? Yes. The, pro the new the battery storage that yeah. was approved a few months ago is right here. Right. Okay. So, okay. so they could make juice and transmit it 100 feet? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's related. It's, it's yeah. getting, in, this, in this case, it's getting the energy from the sun and then right. putting the energy back in the grid. But right now, uh, in the ordinance, it's not allowed at all. So it's the, so the company has some slides. The officials from the company are here, <coughs> and they have some slides that they would like to present to you. Uh, the the airport you, director has he has a, he provided a letter which we handed out. So did you hand it out? No, I have it right. Could here. Could you hand it out to the yeah. commission? Uh, what he's going to hand that's a letter from the Valley International Airport, correct? Okay. Right. <coughs> and they're recommending that there's coordination. They they support the project. Okay. Officials from the company are here and they have some slides that they would like to present to, to the commission if, if it's okay with you. Sure. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Porter. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Footprint. We're a solar development company. And I'm glad that I have slides. I would just ask, is this... Excellent. Yep, so what we do is we go um, from different state markets and we find properties that are properly situated near substations, which allow us to do larger solar farms, normally in the 20 to 40 acre type size, uh, <coughs> which is what we're, what we're putting forward uh, to the city of Harlingen. And <coughs> what we would like to do is, um, first of all, speak in favor of passing an <coughs> ordinance that would allow us to at least come in for a special use permit. And then that would allow us to then come in for a building permit. And tonight we're talking <coughs> about uh, that potential code change. <coughs> um, <clears throat> We've had quite a bit of experience doing this in other communities. Uh, we like to uh, point out that uh, um, in, in many ways there are things that often aren't <clears throat> talked about but are important. Uh, in Texas, as you all know, we had a large issue with a <clears throat> weather event that knocked out a lot of the power. and. It was a disaster. And one of the things that solar and plus this battery project, what it can do is it can add resiliency to your local grid. <clears throat> Our projects are designed to produce local energy that is then used locally. So this is not a transmission project or projects that we're putting forward here to the city. And so that's important. So between your battery system that you all have approved 
and solar uh, farms at our scale, which are, again, much smaller than transmission level projects, we can build resiliency long term. Uh, at, at, we would be part of a process of having Harlogen be able to handle a natural disaster more easily. I live in Florida. We had a really bad hurricane that hit us in the southwest <coughs> portion. It knocked out power, erased some towns. But there was a town inland that you might not have heard about, but it was on a solar microgrid. And after that hurricane, that was the only town within a very large distance <coughs> that still had power for its residents. So that is the type of long-term gains we can make working together. This is, again, getting specific on projects, but really what we're talking about is just allowing these in general tonight. But these are the locations. One is uh, at <coughs> basically at the foot of the runway, and uh, the director of the airport put a nice letter, I think, in front of you. I've read the letter. We are absolutely team players. We have to make sure that this is not any type of hazard for the flying public, and that would be something we would work through uh, with the airport authority. Uh, one of the things uh, we recommend that you consider charging, but I saw in the notes from the planning and zoning board that they were questioning why we brought that up. It's not very important to us to necessarily deal with that, but I do think as a city that's obviously wanting to do new things and, and create business, you're going to, at some point, you'll want to think about how are you going to regulate charging stations such as you would regulate a gas station. I do want to, um, we're getting into that business along with our solar and battery storage. And so I just recommend that that be something that, that you all consider in the future. But that is not necessary <coughs> for these two developments that we're looking at tonight. This one, as Javier pointed out a little earlier, is also close to the airport. Um, uh, it's a perfect uh, situation in that it is very flat. We have access to three-phase power, which we <coughs> need. The conductor strength is very good, and we're close enough to the substation to make these projects viable. And obviously, we need the cooperation and support of the city, but we also need the cooperation and support of the utility or then they can also um, hold us back. Uh, so in some cases, <coughs> that does happen. So um, again, to the ask, we're asking you to consider uh, amending your zoning code to allow for small, what we consider small solar facilities as a permitted use or by special use permit, which I believe is in the package before you. <coughs> the solar industry continues to grow, as you all know. Uh, it, is, it is becoming more and more inexpensive. Every kilowatt hour we produce from when I first started the company 13 years ago, a uh, kilowatt hour of energy from solar was about triple of what it is today. It is a, it's amazing. <coughs> the technology keeps getting better. We need less and less land. Uh, to produce more power because the power of each individual solar panel is getting more watts per square foot. And so that's exciting in that I can see a day when power, electricity starts going down. We believe we're part of reducing the long-term cost to consumers and businesses of energy, which they will need 
in order to make their business or their home more affordable. So even though this is a small step for the city of Harlingen, it's a big step in the fact that we are in an energy revolution. We believe solar is part of that. Texas has always been a leader in energy, um, and that is witnessed by all the different types of energy you have. So we are here to uh, ask you please to consider uh, allowing for these, uh, again, these smaller scale solar farms. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions. You have a couple of questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Will this be static or will it be on a motor for like 145, 150 degree sweep? Yeah, so what you're, a uh, great question. And so what we're talking about is will it be fixed tilt and not move at all or will it be sort of on a north-south uh, right. tracker? Yeah. It's yeah. A, what we call a single axis tracker. Now normally we do single axis trackers because we can produce about 20 to 25% more energy per acre that we have of solar. Um, and really it's gonna come down to working with the airport, uh, I think Director of Aviation, uh, Mary Esterly um, had pointed out, we have to make sure that this works for the airport. Um, so I don't know. Normally we do single access trackers, okay. but I'm not sure what the FAA study will show. Oh, okay. And that, that's why I can't answer you directly okay. on that. And then second, uh, do you ha legally, do you have to sell to the grid or you could sell to that battery station? You use the word a micro. Well, we love grid. Texas deregulated market. Uh, we can sell uh, different ways through the grid. So, indeed, <coughs> the the um, now if I were the battery owner, which I'm not in, in this case, I would want to buy low and sell higher. So they're going to want to probably buy energy from your wind uh, installations in the area maybe from us at different times of the day where there's too much energy, and that's what a battery farm is perfect for. They, they can use all the energy that's not being used and then they can re-release it into the peak times of the day. In the morning when you wake up and start turning on everything, and then when people come home from work and they start turning on everything, washers, dryers, mm -hmm. all that, yeah. Okay. What brought you to Harlingen? That's a good question. Again, I really think the main thing is that it is a deregulated market. It allows for developers of our scale to be able to come in and if we can get the permission from the city of Harlingen, then we're able to develop and build these projects at a profit. Is it gonna be one job, one maintenance job per site? A one maintenance job for both sides? I would say it's a pr probably in general one to handle both. Um, these are not big job generators other than construction work which only lasts a certain amount of time. Uh, I used to be uh, an elected official and I know you have to balance the budget. One of the great things about <coughs> solar in this case is that once we install it there's very little city s services that are necessary. We don't require a, a lot of police, we, sewer, water, none of that. And, but what you do is you gain from the tax revenue and in my, in, in my opinion, the lowering of energy cost over time for your citizens and for your businesses. So in other words, you have the benefit of a large asset uh, a valuable asset being built and the tax revenue that comes from it without all the normal uh, city services having to be provided. Therefore, if you look at it from a profit and loss, you get a good chunk of tax revenue with very little expense from the city service point of view. I know, <coughs> excuse me. You're, you have already answered a couple of my questions. One, you need about 20 to 40 acres. Uh, could you do more? And at a different location. 
yes, we would like to. Uh, we often, when we have good relations with a, a city or a county or a town, um, and we find that, okay, they want us here, you know, that's, that's really why I'm here tonight. It's just to see, does the city of Harlingen want us to be here? And if the answer is yes, then I'll have my analysts look at other substations in the area and, you know, and if there are good sites that fit the requirements of hopefully the new zoning, then we would look at that. I think, I think the way it's set up is maybe we're looking at industrial zoned property. So wherever there would be industrial zoned property, is that true, Javier? Yeah, can, can you go back to the map, the street map? Uh, yeah, yeah. And so, what street is that east west? This is Grimes. 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 And this is what we voted on earlier. Excuse me, Jose. Marvin, can you pop up here real quick, please? Marvin, as you've taught me every question as it relates to the airport, somehow <coughs> it's related to the FAA, right? <laughs> yeah, um, it always tends to be, yes. So I know in the past there's been issues about buildings in, in like your flight path area, right? Like it can't be over a certain height or whatever. What is more or less the height restrictions for this area? So like, example, if I wanted to throw up a massive uh, Tesla factory, would I, I would be there would be a certain height restriction on that, right? Yeah, I think uh, it's hard for me to, to say exactly, but I think you'd be sitting somewhere between 60 um, and 78 some feet uh, in height. Um, it's, uh, it, it, would, it would be in our overlay zone uh, as well. Um, so when you, you look at those things, uh, you don't really want those in, a, in the in concrete structures and things in, in flight paths, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, Solar, uh, like I, I stated in my letter, is something working together uh, that we may be able to do because it, it provides a benefit to the airport uh, to, you know, where land can't be utilized for a lot of other things. It can be utilized uh, to act as a buffer uh, between, um, you know, the airport and <coughs> an incompatible land use. Um, so that's that's why I, I stated in my letter that there is a benefit to the airport to, and for the future of the airport uh, to have uh, these properties be utilized for something that would be compatible uh, with their air. And, and sir, the, you're talking six, seven foot high solar arrays, right? Yes, six, seven foot high? We say 15 feet and down. Okay. Yeah, plenty of room. And Beverly, would you mind popping up here a little bit? <coughs> Beverly, as you know, I'm very big about, we don't have very much land in Texas. We can mm -hmm. annex just like we used to before. And so whatever land we use for these types of projects, I want to make sure the best use for that land. And do you believe, or does the EDC, I know you're only a representative of the EDC, uh, believe that this is the best use of our land comparatively? I know within the restrictions that the right. FAA uh, boxes us into, yeah, so uh, based on actually what Marv said too, I, we, we do think it's a good use. We did meet with um, the company um, prior to uh, them uh, requesting the SUP. Um, and, and we also made sure like they were on board, that Marv was going to be on board as well. Um, depending on the <coughs> utilities in that area, it may be harder um, to get utilities on the, the larger of the acreage. Um, and, and even on the front where the airport landing strip basically ends, um, Marv made a good point is it's, you know, is how usable is that land? And so it's a good opportunity to put something that's going to generate taxes uh, for the city without the low, you know, the higher service fees. But um, yeah, so we are in a kind of approval of this. We're in support of it. Okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Is there any other, any other questions, comments? <clears throat> Mayor, there's no action on this right. item, but they just want uh, authorization to proceed forward with the, uh, the change. Do it. 
thank you very much for your time tonight. Appreciate it and look forward to working with you all soon. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 8, consideration and possible action to select the highest ranking firm and authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract for prof professional services pursuant to RFQ number 2023-16, Commerce Street uh, Corridor Redesign. Good evening, Mayor and City Commissioners. Uh, for the record, Ana Hernandez, I'm the Special Projects Director. Um, on June 19th, uh, we, uh, well, well, the city went out for request for proposals for the redesign of Commerce Street. Uh, we received a total of six uh, responses, and these responses were evaluated by a committee, or evaluation committee, uh, comprised <coughs> of uh, city staff. And uh, we have included the preliminary rankings and, and scoring of all six proposals. The top three um, respondents were CSC, Cobb Fendley, and Hansen. And so the ask before you, or the reason why we're bringing this item, is to either request for you to select the highest ranking firm and authorize the city manager to execute a contract or begin negotiations and, and execute a contract, or um, the other option is to um, petition from, for these um, three top scoring, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting Tongue twisted. It's to bring back the other the three firms and, and have them make a presentation, presentation directly yes. to the city commission. Yes. So we could either uh, authorize the top ranked firm and authorize city manager to negotiate a contract with them, or you, if you want to evaluate the three top firms yourselves, you can. I, not, not today at a separate meeting. I trust you people to do your job that you're hired to do. gave them a 20 out of 30 points for their project approach. Right. Uh, what, what was your concern there? Uh, not so much a concern, it's just that um, one of the big um, things that we need from this project is, is kind of that innovation. And so for them, I think it was very traditional, the approach that they were proposing. And so they obviously have the qualifications. They, they have, um, I don't know if you noticed, but the experience and the uh, qualifications, they have a very um, strong, um, you know, set of transportation individuals or transportation experience, and that was one of their strengths. Um, but that will be the, the one takeaway from that proposal that, you know, is, it was a project approach. And in <coughs> fact, I think staff recommendation will be for you guys to listen to those three um, presentations um, so you can, <coughs> you know, learn about their perspective. Because I feel like at the end of the day, it's the project approach that is going to be the deciding factor between those three. They're all qualified and, and they have a good, you know, team put together. Luis, if you can pop up here. Good evening. Luis Vargas for the record, city engineer. Y yes, sir. So maybe, uh, on your, the way you rated CSE, right? You gave them a 15 out of 20 for firm <coughs> capability and past experience. Uh, as you know, I'm always worried about past experiences with these co companies. Do you have any concerns with them? No, not at all. Uh, past experience has been great. Um, uh, was it 15 out of 20? 15 out of, yeah, you gave them a 15 out of 20. And that was... Uh, He's, they're ranked number one. And then the one I asked you about on a... Finley, they're ranked number two, so. uh, yeah, uh, I guess that category has two <coughs> items, right? Past experience and capabilities, right? Um, past experience been great, no, no issues at all. Uh, it was, I guess, project cap capabilities that um, was, that was the reason of the deduction, really. Um, that I, I thought I see, uh, I saw uh, more capabilities in other firms, right? Uh, as far as um, um, a road project, you know, a, a, a right of way reconstruction. Uh, as far as capabilities with uh, CSC for drainage, they've been excellent, right? And it's hard for me to, you know, say that when, and with the engineering community, but you've asked, so I, I respond, you know, with transparency, so. Okay. So even though we'll bring in the top three, no one's a clear at least in my mind, a clear front runner. Uh, perfect, thank you. Yes, sir. 
I got a question. Um, how much time are is the presentations going to be? I mean, it's up to you. In the past, we have done 15-minute presentations, five-minute questions. It could be less. Okay. Uh, it's up, it's really all, up to you. Pardon? It's really up to you how, how long they need to be. We, we, we normally go about 30, no more than 45 minutes yeah. per, per firm. But I think in 30 minutes, you can have a 15-minute presentation, allow for maybe uh, five to 10 minutes of question and answers, and then move on to the next one. I have a, a question for you, Anna, and I was I was looking at this last night um, in preparation <coughs> and, and uh, the scoring process, and I was looking at yours specifically. I really value your opinion, um, especially on this on this project, mm -hmm. and um, and and I and I see the criteria and the firm capability and familiarity with the applicable rules and regulations would seem to be um, a more of a report <coughs> card, right, on 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 the firm um, past experience with them, and if they're competent or ability, you know, their abilities to, to do the job. And so I saw this J or G D J engineering and their their score was was really low, especially in those two areas. Um, and then I moved over to Oscar and he's kinda he scored them really high. So I'm trying to figure out um, before if we're gonna do this this like workshop to, to see the others um, I'm a little concerned of, of leaving other people out. I don't. I don't know. Understand the the big difference in the in the scoring. So can you can you just? Uh well, I can speak uh, from my um, experience uh, reviewing the, the that particular group. And to me, it was so the the response. They may be qualified. They might be knowledgeable. But based on the response, it kind of addressed other issues that we just didn't need to kind of focus on uh, for this project. And so I think they have a lot of involved with the RGB MPO. They're very <coughs> knowledgeable about the process. And so they kind of mentioned a lot of that. And so that wasn't really necessarily something that will be beneficial to us. We're not looking for that. We understand how that works. And so um, I think for me, that was kind of the main reason. Uh, I will say that in terms of rules and regulations, that's really important. <coughs> it wasn't necessarily just to kind of just get automatic uh, points. Uh, this is a grant funded project. This is the FHWO who we're dealing with, not TechStat. Mm -hmm. And so that requires a lot of knowledge of, you know, federal regulations, and that, that really matters. So we really need to kind of bring on board people that are going to, you know, they have the expertise that they have worked with FHWA before in the regulations, and we can't be just telling them what they need to focus. They need to tell us, you know, how to, how to stay compliant, pretty much. So, oh, sorry. Please continue. Please continue. So in that same vein, I, I was thinking, uh, and I was looking over your, um, your scoring of TED <coughs> and since they're in transportation, I just assumed they'd be much higher, but they scored low also. Was that, is that the same reasoning yes. behind it? Like more fluff and not answering the question? Right, so, I mean. That's I what lawyers don't right. like, I'm just saying, right? <laughs> we went with. Uh, so. Yeah, it was a lot of that. Um, maybe they didn't have time to, you know, put together uh, a stronger proposal, I don't know. So I, I can't assume anything regarding that, but. I think it was very similar, and also with Tetsi, um, they didn't have any, or at least they didn't specify um, if they have any experience doing a major reconstruction project like this one. And so we're talking about 30 million reconstruction project. I mean, this is just the planning phase, um, but we need people that have done this in the past, especially because the ask is a little bit more than that, just doing reconstruction. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna be re redesigning the entire street, and so, um, yeah, that was kind of a concern to me, that they need to show that they have, obviously, the past experience. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can I ask the same questions to Oscar? I'm just curious of, on the scoring, and this isn't the first project, and, and not just you. I just... Oscar Garcia, Director of Public Works, for the record. So I hope you were listening what I was, <laughs> what I yes. was asking. Was uh, there was the J uh, GDJ Engineering and the Tetsi firm, and I saw well, you kind of gave high marks for for almost everyone, but um, that they were such different between you and Anna. Did what? What were your? Because if I'm looking at just your scores, then I would say we probably should just hear from all of them. Um, was there one that stood out more so than the others? I know CSC is Jeff, it looks like the front runner for everyone. 
but they're so close. Um, did you not see any of those same concerns that Anna had in the, those two firms? I, I, for the most part, all of them are very qualified. Uh, okay. Some that were rated lower are past experiences, right? And uh, so I took that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Some of them had a, a detailed jobs that uh, had a certain value, but yet they didn't put completion value at the end. So I, I, I wanted to see that, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the other ones were very thorough. Uh, they were very familiar with the area. So I looked at, at that as well. Uh, and just the overall presentation, the way they presented it, some of them to me <coughs> added more value because uh, they were more detailed than the others. So that's why they were rated different. Which ones did you, would you say had the most familiarity with our area? Uh, the ones I rated uh, <laughs> one and I, two. So that would be CSC and Cub Finley. Yeah, and my third one, I did, I, yeah, I did mention them because because of what you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, their familiarity with the transportation. Yeah, with, yes, and uh, previous experience with one of the members there. Uh, he's been doing streets and drainage for decades that I remember. So, so, but yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I I don't know if Commissioner has questions. For you. Yeah, uh, real quick. Uh, in the brief summary, you use a term associated preliminary engineering. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about like construction management? So whoever gets this contract would also do the bid, help us do the bid process to get the construction company? No, no, no. Anything like that? No, we're actually following the FHWA definition for preliminary engineering. So in this case, it's like, um, I, I don't know if you noticed in the RFQ document, so we describe the scope of work as doing the planning and the visioning because we need that. We want to make sure that we have community input uh, and that's going to be very key. Typically, you know, that's we have one public hearing and then we say we're done with that requirement. Um, then we have the preliminary engineering, which is basically anything leading to um, that final design. So um, it, it will require, you know, um, I don't know, like schematic, preliminary schematics, al uh, alternatives, um, you know, everything related to hydraulics and, you know, all of that work that you need to do in order to have your final design. And, and then we also need environmental um, to make sure that is, you know, we need clearance and then we need the final design. So those are the stages or that's what What's imply? This project's not going to give you a final design. It will not. No. <coughs> okay. Yes, it will. It will. It will give us a final design. Um, and okay. So I thought it was just a preliminary. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. And, and you see, that's that's kind of the general discussion. But I think it's more like we need to make sure that we kind of stick to the FHWA definition, and uh, we can, you know, maybe do a better job um, educating the public as well. And so, as we construct this, then whichever company we have here will work with the construction company to make sure everything's on board with the design, correct? Or is it here are the designs? Right. By I think it's more like that. Yeah. So well, I think here generally, when you have a company mm -hmm. that designs a project and has the final plans, they're the ones that are involved in the right. going out for construction. <coughs> I mean, that might be the case. <coughs> yeah, my, yeah. Go ahead. Typically, for a design package, we can include a construction phase services. This project, it should be included, and I recommend we include construction phase services throughout the construction of the project. So, yeah, because you're absolutely right, Anna. My ears not following these federal guidelines. I, I've seen it on other projects that I've worked on, and I want to make sure that we have cohesion. I agree with you, Anna, 100%. Luis, thank you for the, uh, the supplemental information. And and I will say that. None of us are engineers up here. Um, trust the engineers in our city. <coughs> and go with what they recommend. Yeah. Luis has done a great job for us, though. So. Well, Luis knows he has my full support. And Anna, I tell her as much as, much as, I, can, as I can. Um, but I, I, I just I, I had those questions on the, on the scoring. Do you, is there any other? questions? I did notice that they were looking at the drainage as well. So <coughs> that's a number one concern for I guess everybody so we're we're doing good thank you I'm just curious are any of the firms local like I don't know how it's gonna work what do you mean like you local like are any of these I know like cop I don't know I'm just okay. trying to find because like I know in the past we would always give our contracts to bigger companies that really don't have that much um, how do I say this teacher mode uh, one of, one of the employees for CEC actually lives in Harlingen. I don't know about the others. 
and, Carlin, and, resident. Yeah. And, and Gabe, is there any federal money involved in this? Yes, this is all federal money. Okay, 100%. well, federal money, you can't pick and choose local people over national people. It has a little summary in the, yeah. or you put some language I saw in about that. In yeah, you're usually right, Randy. We would go for something like that, but because this has federal money attached to it, we can't use that as a consideration. As a criteria. But it's something that we all agree on yes. with other projects that we yeah. can do that. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. Mm -hmm. So is the commission wanting to um, have uh, yeah. like, a, like a workshop to, to, to ask the questions or are you, okay, hold on. Uh, uh, there's more but than I, just Mike. I repeat myself. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm just putting it out there so that we were clear. Um, are we wanting, you said that was the staff's recommendation, yeah. right? Um, to, just to just have based on the magnitude of the, pro of the project. Right, and I, and I wanna make sure that Commissioner Lopez is your district, if this is something that you want to do, and I'm sure we can take the time to do that, or if y'all want to go forward and, and just move move forward without having a workshop. I would like to have the workshops. I would like for them to present us with their designs and for the commission to make a decision at that point. Just the top three? Uh, yes. Top Will you guys determine the top three are? Let's have the decision. Okay. Would you not want to include them all since the, the numbers are kind of all over the place? I think we just stick with the top. In my mind, stick with uh, okay. the ones I look towards are specifically is uh, Luis, Anna, and Oscar, right? Those are the three that, in my mind. The reason I say that is because uh, uh, I think Oscar's number three is different from the others. Yes. What is the top three, right? The top three is CSC, um, Cobb Fenley, and Hansen. Right, and Overall, Oscar's but was Ted C. And so there's just a little yeah. bit of a, a but I, I mean, I, I leave that to you. I mean, y'all can make that decision, but if we're, we're gonna do a workshop, might Why don't as well. we just do all six? Just to get out of the way, and then whoever has it can either way. <coughs> Isn't there was no purpose in like grading them? We should just grade them ourselves. I say top three. Good. Okay, yeah. your district. All right, so is there a motion? Or do we need them? Yes, it's a, yes, it's an action item. <laughs> so I would make Okay. Go ahead. a motion for the top three. Commissioner? Yeah, I'll make the motion to uh, here are presentations from the top three uh, point getters in this item for uh, them to do a 15 minute presentation with five minutes for questions on their designs and uh, future uh, <coughs> plans for commerce. And we're going to relay that to them, right? Those 15 minutes? I, I think they're all here. They're so. all here. <laughs> okay, yeah. great. Um, I second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries, and maybe we can do that the, as quickly as possible. Can we get that scheduled? We can we're, do it for our next meeting. Okay. We have a special meeting for Tuesday. So why don't we do that just so that way we're not wasting any time. Is all that right. okay? All right. Everybody all right? Fantastic. Next Tuesday, 5.30. 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. <coughs> all right, item. Did we have a motion? Yes. Yes, yes, yes we, we did. did have a motion I made the from motion. Lopez. No, second. Okay. Okay, item nine, presentation of the investment report for the city of Carlingen for the quarter ending June 30th, 2023. Good evening, Mayor and City Commissioners. Uh, my name is Robert Rodriguez, I'm the Finance Director. Uh, I'd like to go over a, a brief overview of the investment report for, for the period of April 1 through June 30th, 2023. Uh, just, just a summary uh, of, uh, of the highlights of this investment report. We do have 81,507,000 uh, in, in total book value in the city funds as of June 30th, 2023. Our interest earned for this period is $959,425. Uh, Excuse me, would you like to hit the button? And push yeah, it? I was just giving a brief summary and then I was gonna go go through, but I, I can go, I can go through. Um, it, it's kind of small, but on the first portfolio summary on the right-hand side is the uh, current. So so right around here, you have your 81,507,919. <coughs> Uh, with interest earned uh, totaling 959,425. Uh, uh, something new that we have in, in this uh, portfolio is that we do have um, interest accretion of 17,945 because we did, under the advisement of our um, financial advisors, Hilltop, uh, we did uh, also go into uh, US government securities, which are treasuries, because they're at a slightly higher uh, interest rate. So. Our, our asset allocation at June 30th is 
uh, our, our bank deposits are 3.24% 3 3 of the total portfolio. Our, uh, our text pool, uh, external investment pool, is at 90%, um, 90.76%, 90 and our U.S. Treasuries are 5.99% of the, of the total uh, portfolio. And at the uh, right-hand side on the, on the uh, portfolio characteristics, you will see our, um, our, our um, current uh, yield to maturity, which is about 4.99. And that's a June 30, 4.99. Right. Interest rates have gone up. Short-term interest rates have gone up. Yes, and sir. So, in, a, um, in a month from now, the Federal Reserve will meet, and my bets are going to raise interest rates again 25 basis points. That is correct. That's, that's, that's what the anticipated. <clears throat> Whether it happens or not, nobody knows. Yeah, that, that, that is what is anticipated. So um, here you'll just see a, a, a rating distribution of our, of our um, <clears throat> portfolio. We have demand deposits, of course, and we have AAA on the um, uh, investment text, 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 text pool, and we have A-1 plus on the short-term uh, treasuries, which is the highest you can go on the, on the short-term uh, treasuries. And point out that the two weeks ago, three, yeah, two weeks, just a little over two weeks ago, Fitch downgraded U.S. Uh, government bonds from a triple-A to a double-A. Right. And so uh, we, did, we did look at our investment uh, uh, policy, and, and we do still fall within the investment policy as, as it, it states that we can invest in the, in the U.S. Treasuries or, or U.S. government securities. Right. And, and you can invest in those even though they've been downgraded from triple-A. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> so that's, that's our allocation of our, our rating distribution. On the next uh, slide, you'll see how the uh, benchmark comparison, how the interest rates uh, continue to climb. Uh, so at June 30th, it's 4.91. Um, that's for six months. They have they have gone up. We um, our uh, our treasuries are at 5.396. The ones that we currently have uh, invested in, um, and under the advisement of our. Uh, Financial advisors, we have gone out for an additional uh, five million uh, with an interest rate of uh, five point three uh, three five. At what maturation? Uh, that one is a one year. The the one that we are currently in matures in, in December. That one was a six month, and the one that we just entered into, and that one that one is a one year. Yeah. What kind of return we're we going to get? The one for December? Uh, we we are getting a five point three nine six. And that's, that's basically an overview of, of what we have. So we, we are still in a uh, text pool. We have uh, about $5 million on June 30th. We have $5 million in treasuries. And, and after that, we in August, we entered into an additional $5 million. That, that concludes the report. We just, we just had a budget amendment that increased our interest earnings by about $700,000 because of the increase in interest rates that we're generating. Just, just to also uh, year to date for for uh, interest that we've earned on these investments has been two point five million, two million five hundred forty eight thousand, which is we have not seen that kind of interest in in many many years. How much was that again that we earned? Uh, two million five hundred forty eight thousand. That, that's for the year. Yeah, for for a year to date, as of June thirtieth. Two point what? So we still need uh, two point five. Two million five forty eight, and we still need. Uh, the, the last quarter of the July, August, and September. So, great job, Robert. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> nope. Thank you. Thanks. Good job. Thank you. Item 10 consideration and possible action to propose a desired tax rate for fiscal year 2023 2024 and schedule a public hearing to be held on September 6, 2023. Mayor, one of the things that uh, I'd like to point out is that we have been working with the uh, proposed budget of 0.545519. Um, and this would advertise that rate if the commission chooses. We do have the option of changing that. Um, however, if we change it, we can only go down. We can't go up without going to the voters. Or um, So I just want to point that out before you vote on this. If this is not setting this rate in stone, um, it is just merely giving the public notice that we can still change that in the future. 
That is correct. So as, you want to explain as, that, Robert? Yes. As part of the, pro the uh, tax setting process, we, we do uh, have to uh, include a, an intention of how you all intend to proceed with the tax rate. At this <coughs> point, the, the tax rate that we have used <coughs> to, to uh, calculate the budget has been the point five four five five one nine. So today, we, we do have to have a record vote on how you intend to go forward. Um, and of course, we recommend the, the uh, rate that we've been using for the budget. But as Gabe said, this is not setting the rate at this current time. This is just to advertise it um, on the um, notice of the public hearing. And then the public hearing occurs. The, the, the public comes out to voice their opinion. But you can change that rate at any time up until you set the rate. Um, in, after our public hearing. Now, the, the official rate will be set when we set the, the M&O and the INS rate? That is correct, yes. So and and that will be set through an ordinance. Right. So I have a question. Um, at the last meeting, I asked to see uh, if we could look what the budget would look like if we reduced it, and there was some question. I think it was almost a, a cent. Mm -hmm. If the commission um, the votes today, and at our next special meeting, we see what that looks like. What you're saying is that we could potentially reduce it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I just wanted and, to. And, to and at that, and at a later date, you can you go with that new rate if you, you if can. you choose. Okay. Yes. Yes, and we'll show more information on that at Tuesday. <coughs> on Tuesday, evening. correct. Uh, and yes. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that that when y'all vote, it does have to be a record vote. So I just need to take Each down. Person, yes. Right. And it has to be today. This could we do this potentially at the next special meeting, or do, do um, we need it right now to go well, along with your schedule of posting? Is that um, we could? It just uh, I'll have to calculate that. Yeah, I, I think we can because depending on on when we plan to finalize the budget and the tax rate, um, y you can because we still have all the way until September 30th to to do that. We we can still do that. You can still, uh, I can put this on the agenda on the for Tuesday to, to vote on this Tuesday. And we'll still be fine? Mm -hmm. Yes. You're sure? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to do it because I want to make sure that we look at that budget and tax rate at the exact same time. So right. we know exactly what we need uh, when we come to a decision on this. So I would make a motion. after you make your question, but I'm going to make a motion at the table. I want to okay. make sure that I understand this. So we can change the... Uh, I know you're going to give us some numbers if it was a one cent reduction, correct? Yes. We, well, we were looking at 0 0.0086 cent reduction. How much? 0 0.0086. That's the number I presented at the last meeting. What if it was a one point? Uh, it was a one percent reduction. Well, a one percent would be, would uh, be one, a lot uh, one, one cent. One cent. I mean, we can, we can we, we'd have to make that calculation. We don't have that. Yet. I, I understand. Yeah. But we yeah. can look at that at the next meeting. And I think um, what Commissioner Lopez is suggesting is that we don't take that record vote today, um, that we look at everything at the next, at the special meeting beforehand before doing that, that record vote. And, it's, and, and I just wanted to make sure that we have the time to do it. Yeah. And if we do, yeah. then uh, I don't see any harm in, in that, um, given that we'll still comply. and. <coughs> deadlines, mm -hmm. and then um, the commission will have more options <coughs> available to them to to review. And I would I would ask that um, the commissioner has asked mm -hmm. for the one cent um, if we can we can have a presentation on that as well. Absolutely. So there was a motion by Commissioner Lopez. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries, and so this is uh, table towards Tuesday. <coughs> Thank you, Robert. It'll be on Tuesday? Yes, sir. Okay. Tuesday. Then. It'll be after the budget presentation, the last thing we do. All right. Um, item 11, consideration and possible action to cancel the city commission yeah. meeting scheduled for October 4th, 2023. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 12, board appointments. We'll start with Commissioner Kinsley. I have none, ma'am. Uh, I have none as well. I yeah. have I have two. For the uh, EDC, I'd like to appoint Linda Burke and Lizzie Putnam. Okay. Yes, um, Linda. 
<laughs> How about uh, Don Ray Lenner for the uh, Charter Review Committee Board? Um, I don't know that those need to be, are those the ad hoc committees? That's not the one. That, that's the ad hoc committee, but. Um, you can just send we, that to Gabe. Okay. Yeah, you can. Uh, but that's only two that we have so far. Actually, it's on the list right here. Is it? Is okay. It? Or if we're doing it this it's way, then that's four fine. Four from the top. Because then four, you might have one. That's no, he, he did send one in. Uh, if, if, we're like, going, if we're going this way, yes, Carly Burns Thomas okay. uh, for the charter review. Yeah, and for the charter review, uh, Victor Leal. Okay. Uh, Lopez, now that we're doing this, do you have someone? Not yet. Okay. Commissioner? Not yet. No. Okay. And do you have any other appointments, Commissioner? I do, I do want to mention, um, the man, do you know how many, or Josh, do you know how many empty spots we still have for the, the youth teen advisory board? The youths? You know. <laughs> That's one of my favorite movies. Sorry, the two the youths. youths. Yeah, yeah, it's the two youths. <laughs> <laughs> Closing argument. I bet. Everything that he said. No. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. <laughs> this conversation is too good. Let me see. Let me the see only reason I ask is because, as you guys know, school just started. So I'm hoping that the, that the now that the school year started, we can get some of these kids, um, you know, actually participating in the board. Um, and also, if you had if you had appointed someone before, I would strongly suggest making sure that they're still here. I know, like my point, my appointee. I'm going to get somebody else because she's already right now at UT. So, oh, she well, left. so, so I'm going to pick somebody else. I have a suggestion. Give me some nam some names, please. I'll get you somebody. Yes, yes. I'll get I was going to say maybe you can you yeah. can talk to your students. Your, your, your teenage yeah. central. I'll get you some hawks. There you go. <laughs> that's, that sounds that's good. Um, for everybody listening at home, I support the hawks. <laughs> <laughs> so do Very I. So. so do I. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is there a motion to approve? So motion. moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13. Real quick. It's going back to item 12, uh, as it relates to the Charter Review Committee Board, I was going to make a recommendation. I was talking to a gentleman uh, who has been on these Charter Review Boards in the past uh, about limiting the scope of what we want them to look at, right? Uh, and I know that the mayor in the past has said that she wants us to update it, but I think that the best way to go is for each of us in the, over the next two weeks to review the charter. If there's something that concerns you specifically that you want to look at, uh, then we give them the marching orders going in. We want to look at X, Y, Z, rather than looking at things that we have no intention to change or whatnot. If you do that, then you need to let staff know just so that we know what, what is soft limits are. And so that then would bring it back the next, uh, in two weeks of the board appointment uh, meeting, that's when we would make that, uh, Give them the marching orders then. We'll discuss it at that point. Good idea. Uh, I think it's a good idea. That so, way. two weeks. The homework is review the charter. If there's anything that you want to review or change, that's, <coughs> we'll do. that's what you bring before us, and then we can discuss it then. And Amanda did hand out copies of the charter to everybody. Yeah. So, you have our copy. Quick, qu quick question. Is it, um, when is the charter, as soon as everyone has their pick, that's when it's going to meet, or when is it going to meet? I think that um, we have, I, I we can be flexible. We are giving them a whole year. To, to no, 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 no. Like, when are they going to start meeting? Once the once they're complete, and once we have the uh, everybody's uh, suggestions, and then I would suggest that we gather and have um, either send those uh, all to to Gabe, or if we need to, we can we can. I don't know if we need to collaborate <coughs> on it. I wouldn't think we would. So as long as you can get that to, to Gabe and to maybe to Mark. And then once that, they can send us an email, like a don't reply email, letting us all know that it's good to go, and then we can score. We can, we can uh, schedule it. Okay. If you could copy me, uh, also copy Amanda on the appointees. Just putting it out there and not no reply all. Just send your stuff. <laughs> that way it goes to, to, to Gabe and Amanda. Um, do you want them to send it to you too, Mark? Gabe? Sure. Yeah. So that, I think that would be good. All right. That's a good suggestion. Um, anything else, Commissioner? No. That's okay. It. Item 13, Executive Session, uh, Consultation <coughs> with Legal Counsel pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.0712 to receive privilege attorney-client communication regarding the SRO agreement currently being negotiated. Is there a motion to go in Executive Session? I'll make the motion. Second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
motion carries. <coughs> the time is now 7.56 and we are going to break for executive session and we will be back shortly. Okay, the time is now 8.14 and we are out of executive session. We do have um, a general session item 14, discussion and possible action to approve the proposed interlocal agreement with HCISD for school the resource officer program, but we do not have any action on that item. So at this time, um, we are adjourned. Thank you.